All right, kids, today we're back with another boat across the river problem. Now the issue in this problem is that the boat is gonna travel through the water more slowly than the water is flowing downstream. And what that means is that there's no way for the boat to go straight across the river. No matter how much it points itself upstream, it's going to be swept downstream inevitably. So in this problem, we're gonna solve for the angle which the boat has to point upstream in order to minimize the distance which it's swept downstream. See, the hard part in solving for the downstream displacement is that it's a bit of a balancing act. You see, if the boat was to point straight across the river, it would get across the river rather quickly, but the whole time it was moving across the river, it would also be getting swept downstream rather quickly. Now, by pointing the boat, or in this case, the little paddleboard upstream, it's gonna take longer to cross the river, but it's not gonna be moving downstream quite so fast. Now, the issue comes up that because the velocity of the boat is less than the velocity of the river, even if the boat is pointed straight upstream, it's still gonna wind up, give it a little nudge, getting swept downstream eventually, because the boat just can't keep up with the river. So if we're trying to minimize the downstream displacement of this boat as it crosses the river, we first need to come up with an expression that relates the displacement to the angle at which the boat is pointed upstream. And to do that, I wanna look at the velocity of the boat in both the x and y axis. Now in the x axis, we're gonna have the velocity of the boat multiplied by the adjacent side of our right triangle, or really the component of the boat's velocity, which is across the river. That's gonna be cosine theta. In the y-axis, we're gonna have the velocity of the boat times its upstream component. This is gonna be sine theta. But then there's the river back downstream. So we're gonna say that's minus the velocity of the river. Now, whether you choose to call upstream or downstream positive is irrelevant, and I'll show you why in the math later on. But the important part to recognize here is that the velocity of the boat or its vertical component needs to have the opposite sign of the velocity of the river. The boat's trying to go upstream, and the stream is, of course, going downstream. Now, like I mentioned, the time for the boat to cross the river is gonna come into play here. Now, that time is gonna be given by the width of the river divided by the horizontal velocity. So subbing this term in up here, we'll get W over VB cosine theta. And even though we don't know this value for theta, we have an expression for the time. Now realize, the entire time the boat is traveling across the river, it's also moving downstream. So downstream displacement, let's call it D, is gonna be given by the time for the boat to cross the river multiplied by how fast it's gonna be moving downstream. So subbing in our expressions for time, as well as Vy, we get this expression. And distributing the time into this function, we'll get this, which cleans up rather nicely into this expression, which relates the downstream displacement to the width of the river, as well as the angle and the velocity of both the river and the boat. And remember, it's this downstream displacement which we're trying to minimize. Now to minimize a function, we're gonna take the derivative of the downstream displacement with respect to the angle, and we're gonna set that derivative equal to zero. So the derivative of this first term is gonna be w times the derivative of tangent, that's secant squared theta minus the derivative of our next term where we have a bunch of constants times the derivative of secant which is secant theta tangent theta now i know a lot of times people see secant and they freak out a little bit uh, but let me show you what's actually happening here i'm going to move one of these terms how about this one over to the other side of the equal sign and right away we see the width of the river is actually irrelevant here I'm also gonna expand out these secants and tangents into trig functions we're more comfortable with, like sine and cosine. And you'll see this cosine theta squared cancels out on both sides. This leaves us with this term, or rearranging it for theta we'll get. This result, which I find absolutely amazing. I mean, when you look at how much we had to set up here and taking derivatives of some ridiculous stuff, we wind up with this really simple function. It's just the inverse sine of the velocity of the boat over the velocity of the river. And if you go back and plug in our original numbers you get, theta is 37 degrees. And you're probably doing this with different numbers, so you'll get a different result. But regardless, I never cease to be amazed at how simple this result actually works out to be. 
Now, one thing to point out here is that if the velocity of the boat is greater than the velocity of the river, you'll find this kicks out an error or a non-real number in your calculator. And ultimately that's because if the boat is going faster than the river, it can actually reach an angle where it can just go straight across the river. And we've looked at how to solve that problem in the past. So this has been how to solve for the angle at which to paddle your pink surfboard across a river in order to minimize the downstream displacement. I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.